our guts they need they need uh they need humates you know it's the primordial Absolutely. the primordial starter of life mm -hmm. and if you can uh you know the, what makes seabird guano so awesome you know that's fish fertilizer that's recycled through a bird you know they they took all uh -huh. the bad stuff out you know it comes out it's got tons of calcium it's, the heavy metals are reduced by a ton you know uh, i mean uh, that's you know I, I love seabird guano when it's collected responsibly yeah yeah i like seabird guano i use it too you know, same with guanos, but the, the problem with guanos, just like a lot of humate products, is the fact that, you know, guanos are a mined product. So they have to do some destruction to get that. Fortunately, uh, for the, the products that we use for making our uh, humic acids are byproducts of the mining industry. So if I'm not using them to make humic acid, they're going into the garbage or they're going into a tailings pond. You know, so I'd much rather see them used for something beneficial than not. Right. You know, and we're able to help, you know, clean that stuff out of those places. But the great thing about humic and fulvic acids is there is no single source. You know, I can make it from compost. I can make it from leonardite. I can make it from peat moss. And each one of those is going to be a slightly different compound. But depending on how it was exposed to natural, whether natural or unnatural uh, 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 elements will dictate how good it is. So a lot of the humic acids that are made from peat, they're much higher in arsenic because of pollution. You know, a lot of the uh, uh, leonardite made uh, humic acids where they source their leonardite out of southern, the southern United States. Those were brackish seas uh, uh, 100,000 years ago. So those have got a lot of salt in them. So that's, again, mm -hmm. not as good, not going to make as good of a product. You know, but if you can uh, get a good biodynamic compost going, that's one of the best ways of making a high quality fulvic acid. But this so what is, is very advanced composting. This is not your compost pile sitting in your backyard. You know, this isn't even a worm bend. This is a, a far more complicated process that involves monitoring the pH, injecting air, you know, uh, rotating, using large equipment to move it at a very specific time at a very specific place. And, uh, uh, you know, we manufacture, we make uh, uh, humic and fulvic acids out of all of these processes. It's just some of them we rely more on for different, uh, different applications and different uh, products. Most of our current products are made from... Uh, uh, Leonardite right now, where that's where we get most of our humic uh, 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 and fulvic acids from, because uh, we've got a very very clean high quality source for it. But that's a mine source. someday that source is going to go away, you know. So we've got to stay on top of it. We got to either switch our source and be able to make as high a quality a product, or we got to find a new way of getting there, you know. So we're already prepared with those before it happens, you know. So if one becomes inefficient or we can't do it because of cost effectiveness, we've got a backup right here to produce the same product, you know. Uh, the the, a lot of the, the products problems when you're manufacturing organic stuff is, is you have to rely on wherever it comes from. And just because this mine produced 070 for the last 10 years, you know, you just got to the bottom of it. It's not going to be the same every batch. You know, you're talking about organic stuff. It, how could it be? You know, how could yes, that alfalfa meal be the same NPK this time as it was grown last year as it was the year before? It's going right. to be close to the same, but it's going to be a little different. You know, that's why it's so important to where if you're on a large scale, you need to check your own stuff. You need to, you know, if you're growing organically in Oregon, you need to check the heavy metals on your inputs. You know, you need to yep. talk to your soil manufacturers. You need to talk to your fertilizer reps. You need to make sure that stuff's not going to, you know, there's no point in growing something if you're going to test hot for heavy metals. It's just a right. waste. Don't even start. You know, you'd be better off using chemicals, you know, and producing an inferior product that you can actually sell. You know, you got to sell it for a lot less and you're competing a lot more but it's still better than nothing, you know, and that's what you're going to get if you're growing product uh, uh, irresponsibly using, you know, uh, uh, crappy organic inputs or polluted inputs. You know, this is why the cannabis industry has a lot of problem using certain fish fertilizers, you know, but it's weird because there's a lot of good ones too. It depends on how old that fish is and how long it's been in the ocean. So if you're going to a, a, a fish byproduct from, let's say, tuna or halibut, those are in the ocean for years and years and years. So those are going to accumulate a lot of heavy metals. Same with crab, same with lobster. But if you go with shrimp, now those got a much shorter life. If you go with a lingcod or sardines, you know, these are little fish that are in the ocean much, much shorter times. And because of that, they're going to accumulate less heavy metals. It's going to produce a cleaner product and you can still use that stuff. There's still good seaweeds out there that you can use, just not everyone on the market. You know, like uh, there's actually the, the one I've been using recently that uh, I know uh, will work in Oregon under our heavy metals is the one from Fox Farm. Uh, I think it's called, it's got a silly name like Kelp You, Kelp Me or something like that. But uh, when you have it tested for heavy metals, it's uh, not, they're uh, uh, below the threshold. You know, they, they're uh, uh, NA, they, you know, they don't show up there. You know, when you go try that with like maxi crop, 
you know, or some of these other uh, seaweeds that have been commonly on the market. And sometimes the arsenic and lead is off the charts. You know, and you just, you know, and people lean on these products too much. You know, uh, you know, they use too much seaweed because their plants are unhappy because their environment isn't dialed in. So they constantly have to use stuff to reduce stress. You know, if you've got a happy, healthy environment, you don't need to use that stuff as much. You're using it for an advantage, not to take care of a problem. You know, and that's uh, the issue with people have with a lot of biostimulants and the problems that they run into when they pull them out of their system. Like you see, I see a lot of this trend in California where people are going uh, strictly to organ uh, inorganic blends and mineral salts because, uh, you know, they think that that's going to work better for them when it, actually it's going to be a lot worse. Their, their shelf life of their products is going to go down. They're not going to have as high quality. Their, their terpene profiles are going to go down. They're not going to have as high a THC. You know, it's, they're going to have a little bit less money that they're spending every month. But eventually that guy that grows better stuff is going to get their market. You know, because so, there's always going to be someone bigger out there to grow more and sell it, you know, and cut their throat, sell it for a little bit less. Right now, cannabis is the only thing you can grow where you get rewarded for quality. You get no more money for a blue or blueberry or a red or apple. That was set by a commodities market in New York. That's not up to you. You know, you, you know, so, you know, that is what it is. So, you know, if you're going to sell on a bulk scale and you're going to go with salts, you're competing with the guys that grow a hundred acres at a time, you know, and they can sell it cheaper. They just can, you know, their model is $25 a pound, $80 a pound, and they can make money selling it at that. Mm. You know, I, most farms, you know, mo, you know, this is one of the great things I learned working for uh, BioAg over the years is I get to see what these farmers do and, you know, what their profit margins are. What, you know, what is the guy growing, uh, 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 you know, uh, peppers or, or hazelnuts or, or uh, celery get per acre? You know, so let's say you're growing something really expensive, something really high end, like uh, boutique peppers. You know, you're growing peppers for a fancy hot sauce. You know, if you, you're doing the most top end, high end stuff out there, you know, it's costing you about 12 grand to 15 grand to get everything set up and harvested for the year per acre. You know, out of that, your profit is about 25, maybe 1500 bucks. You know, that's a, you know, and that's a great profit margin for, uh, for the ag for agriculture, you know, spending 15 grand to make two.